In this video, we'll explore spot fire filters. When adding a data table, the visualizations are initially created with the entire set of data from the table that you added. You can use spot fire filters to filter data and see those results that you are particularly interested in. When filtering data, the data values are filtered out of the data table, and only the remaining filtered values are included in what is being visualized. All visualizations that are based on the data table in the analysis will be immediately updated and will reflect only the filtered values. You can, though, at any time, change what is filtered, or you can return to the full set of data by resetting the filters, or you can even have control at a visualization level. Now keep in mind that each column in the data table is represented by a filter. When a column value is filtered out, every row that contains that value in the underlying data table will be temporarily removed. The filters are available in the data panel, the filters panel, and they can also be controlled from text areas. And we'll see an example of that later. The filters that you can use depend on what type of data the column contains. And Spotfire tries to apportion the best possible filters for the particular data type. However, you can change the filter type if you want. And we'll, again, have a look at that later. For now, let's just focus on the types of filters. And one other thing. Now, you don't see the filter panel, and that's because, by default, it's unselected. So if I go to Tools, Options, and Document, then I can see here Filters Panel open by default. So if I check that, then every time you open your visualization, the filter panel will show. We'll just leave that the way it is for now. And if it's not showing, like it isn't here, we can just go to the View menu and select Filters. You can also select filters from the data panel as well. Okay, but we're going to work with the filter panel here because we're going to look at the different types of filters. Okay, so first, on the filter panel here, you can see that you can search for filters. Okay, type to search the filter. And we don't have to do that. We can just scroll down through our filters because we don't have that many. Okay, and now let's take a look at the types of filters. So first up, is the checkbox filter. Now this type of filter allows you to select one or multiple values, as you see here, by checking or unchecking the checkboxes beside them. This is a really good type of filter to use when you have relatively small sets of text values or perhaps even integer number sets like what we have here. So again, if we Click these, we can unselect them. And you can see here, now those are filtered out, and you can see here at the bottom that as you change filters, that they show up here. That is, the changes show up at the bottom. Let's just put those back in. Okay, we'll go down to the next type of filter. And that type of filter is the list box filter. A list box filter provides you with a list of all the possible values that you can select. Now you can select one or more by holding down control. So here I'm holding down the control key, I'm selecting more than one. Or you can select all and it'll select all the values. And you can hold down the shift key and select a range of values. You can also enter some text to search for. So if we wanted to search for some particular text, it'll show these two, and then we can select them. Okay, the next type of filter is a text filter. And this allows you to enter a string of text that you can search for and match for this particular data. This is really good for large sets of text values, whereas the list box filter that we saw above is good for small or large sets of text values. So if we want to type in, for example, the last name that starts with K, 
Okay, I know that there's one person with the last name that starts with K-H-O-U-R-Y. Okay, and so it matched that. Is there anybody that starts with a Z? No, there's not. So that's how you use the text filter. Okay, the next one is a range filter. There's another checkbox filter first, but the range filter here, salary. And the range filter allows you to filter by a range of values. And it's really good for values with large continuous sets of numeric data or even dates so you can select a particular date range. So you just grab a slider and you can select the slider range. So if we're going, you know, from a particular salary range, we can specify that by using these sliders. Okay, and the next one is an item filter. And it's similar to the range filter in that you use a slider. But it allows you to select one value at a time. And this includes all or none. So if we slide over here, we're selecting the U.S. office, we're selecting the Canadian office, and then we're selecting all. After all, that's what radio buttons are in user interface design. So you can select all or none. You can select Asia, EU, US, and so on. So you can just select one at a time. And finally, there's the hierarchy filter. The hierarchy filter is a filter type that shows hierarchical data in an expandable tree view. The good examples of data that you can use a hierarchy filter for are date and time information or geographic data. And here you see we've got a date hierarchy. So if, if I drill down in here, actually let's just unselect all of these for now. Okay, so we filtered those out and let's expand them. And we can see that we've got the month and we've got actually the day of the month as well. So let's just check March here. So we'll select on March. And let's go and do the same thing for 2015. We'll select only March. And we'll do the same thing for 2016. We'll expand that, select only March. And you can see the values of sales for March for each year. So that is a tree view of your date data. Okay, so in this video, we explored spot fire filters.